Hi everyone, I'm George Farrar and welcome to Jax 78. Jacksonville as it was in the year 1978. I'm pleased to bring you a year-by-year -year series of Jacksonville about Jacksonville history year-by-year year from the year 1975 through the year 1995. So here we are in 1978 and as you can see here with all these runners coming uh, off down the Main Street Bridge from downtown Jacksonville. We know it's the Main Street Bridge, also known as the John T. Alsop Jr. Bridge. We have the first river run. People running in the first Jacksonville River Run. It was known as the Jacksonville River Run back then. It was sponsored by Florida Publishing Company, uh, which owned Florida Times Union and the Jacksonville Journal. And here we see all these runners uh, coming down a street and you can see in the background a big ship, okay? We still had, back then, the shipyard, okay? So uh, this was an exciting time for Jacksonville, uh, a 15-kilometer race going over two bridges, going over the Hart Bridge, over the Main Street Bridge. So something really amazing, exciting. Uh, the winners will, were Bill Rogers on the men's side, and Kim Merritt on the women's side. A strenuous race, as you can see here, going over the Hart Bridge. And you see a sign that says, pay toll one mile, okay? Because uh, back then, Hart Bridge, the Hart Bridge was a toll bridge. When you crossed over uh, towards, on the south side, headed towards Atlantic Boulevard, you paid a toll. And then here, you have someone encountered the strenuous race and needed support. People gathered around the Main Street Bridge, uh, cheering everyone on, enjoying the festivities. What a beautiful spring day. This race, this first river run, uh, demonstrated, I think, uh, displayed out there to the world uh, the great strengths Jacksonville has uh, when it comes to our river, enjoying the river, and our different bridges and different um, opportunities people have for leisure. And so it was definitely something that put Jacksonville on the map, and it happened April 1st, 1978. So while all this was going on, all these folks were racing and cheering, something big was going on. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a picture of the Action News team. Uh, we see here, uh, it looks like a cameraman, uh, and an Action News 12 WTLV news car. We see the news van with the satellite dish and standing next to the satellite dish is my father in 1978. This is WTLV where my father worked. Uh, he worked there for a couple years. He would later move on to work for WJXT TV4 for 25 years. So, uh, he was really getting things going here in Jacksonville. He was retired U.S. Navy, had an electronics engineering background, and so he was getting into broadcasting, engineering, okay, helping uh, folks uh, to make sure the equipment was working. He would repair. He would go out and make sure live shots uh, would transmit from where uh, the report, the news report was to the station and out onto the television so we could watch it. And it's exciting. And I remember these times. I remember these TV stations. I remember in the evenings going uh, to uh, for when he would need to be picked up from time to time. Uh, so now before, though, we go on further, I want to tell you about my mother because... She was someone who was very special. Her name was Martha, and she was my mother. She died in 1984, and so uh, a lot is going to happen in the year 1978. It will be one of the most critical years of my life because in 1978, my mother and my father divorce. My mother was a music therapy teacher and a very, very great, refined lady of social graces, a Southerner who hailed from Raleigh, 
North Carolina. And you'll hear more about her and my times with her. Uh, but there's going to be this big split. And in 1978, I'm three years old. And so ultimately, my uh, mother will go her separate way. I'll have visitation with her uh, for a good while. And you'll hear about some of the fun uh, that I had in Jacksonville in the late 70s and early 80s ahead on the series. She's a very smart lady, uh, very smart woman, uh, and uh, she cared deeply. Uh, and uh, so when we take a look going forward, uh, it's going to start, I'm going to start to remember more. I'm going to start to remember things in Jacksonville growing up. And one of my first memories is of my grandmother and of my mother. And we're going to start talking eventually about my stepmother. Uh, this is a picture uh, of me. This would be probably more around 1977 um, with my father, with the old car that I remember uh, fooling around with because we had it for a long time out of my grandparents' place. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ultimately be with my father. And I was living up until this point in a series of apartments. Ultimately, I lived in this place called Roosevelt Road Apartments. And that was the last apartment uh, I would live in in the 1970s because in 1978, in the summer of 1978, I moved to Arlington. I moved to Arlington. I moved into Jacksonville, Florida. Became a resident of Jacksonville. And so all of this is going on. My father's working at a TV station. Uh, he's My father and my mother have divorced. And so along will come my stepmother named Pat. And uh, we'll talk more about everyone. My mother, my father, my stepmother, uh, my grandmother, my grandfather, uh, from time to time on the series. So in the summer of 1978, my father and my stepmother move into an old house built that was built in the 1950s uh, in Arlington on Morgana Road. And so I'm going to start to become a part of a vibrant neighborhood. And so I'm going to be able to tell you about my memories of growing up in Arlington, on the south side, later on in Mandarin, and on the west side. Uh, so I'm real excited because in the coming years in the series, there's going to be a lot of memories I'm going to have that I'm going to share with you. But first, we have to get through 1978. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what else was going on in 78. The first memories I have living in Jacksonville was the music and the DJs riding in the car with my father and my stepmother around Arlington, the South Side, downtown, all over the place. And one of the big DJs in the late 1970s in Jacksonville was the Grease Man, Doug Tract. He was a big DJ. He would broadcast out of WAPE, which actually had their studios south of Orange Park on Highway 17. I always thought that radio station was really cool because you would drive by and you'd look over and you'd see this pool. And, you know, it really got you into thinking about, you know, how cool radio was back then. Okay? So... Uh, he was a big DJ. He uh, was a DJ here in Jacksonville from 1975 until 1982. He went up to Washington, D.C., where he was a DJ there. He would return to the Jacksonville Airways briefly in the 1990s, from 1996 until January of 1998, and from 2008 to 2010 also. He was edgy for his time. There was, there was also the music. There was Bob Dylan and Meatloaf. They uh, visited. Jacksonville and performed. The Grateful Dead performed. 
And so here we are uh, taking a look at the San Marco Theater uh, back in 1978, a movie back then starring Burt Reynolds was playing at the San Marco Theater. Burt Reynolds was very big back in this time. Uh, Burt Reynolds made going to movies fun uh, for especially a three, four, five-year-old. Uh, this movie uh, was Hooper at the San Marco Theater. If you went out to Jacksonville Beach in 1978, this is what it would have looked like. You had the Flag Pavilion. Remember the Flag Pavilion? I really enjoyed that. And there's a Ferris wheel, bathhouse, the cars. Looked like a cool place back then. I would experience, start to experience it in the early 1980s. So, uh, so it's great to look back, uh, not only at what was going on uh, elsewhere in Jacksonville downtown, but also at the beaches. So all of Jacksonville here, we have this mayor, Hans Tanzer, and he'd been mayor of Jacksonville for quite a long time. He was the first mayor of Jacksonville under the consolidated government of October 1st, 1968. Uh, so he uh, had been in office for a long time. He had aspirations to go beyond being mayor of Jacksonville. He ultimately wanted to be the governor of Florida. So when he decided he wanted to be governor of Florida, he had to resign. To, to do the campaigning, uh, he was required to resign. And so City Council President Jake Godbold would be taking over. Uh, so Jake Godbold, he, was, uh, uh, he worked at Independent Life. In this 1974 picture, we see Workman taking the door off of his office in City Hall when he was a city councilman. He was all about openness, informality, uh, direct communication, talking to folks, uh, and you're going to have a chance to learn a little bit more about the mayor, Jake Godbold, as the years go by, because he's going to be the mayor of Jacksonville until 1987, okay? So this is going to be a, a very uh, large portion of the series is going to be the Jake Godbold mayoral administration, and Jake Godbold was a Democrat. So, uh, all right. As we take a look at this picture of an Amtrak train uh, at the uh, Amtrak station on Clifford Lane in September 1978, as we do that, uh, let's talk about what's ahead on the Jack's Left channel. I'm going to be bringing you an episode of History Jacksonville. They'll be at our Main Street Bridge, and I'll also be uh, following all the different things going on in the political realm uh, as the issues really heat up as we start to go into spring and ultimately into summer and the campaigns are going to start so I'll be watching all of that and uh, I've been working on a show called Jack's Left News which is going to be a great news show uh, for you to enjoy here on this channel. There's so much ahead, so much to bring you. I'm excited to be able to bring it to you uh, and I hope that you're enjoying this history series, not only on the Jack's Left channel, but also over on the George Farrar channel. Uh, I um, do like to bring this uh, to as many people as possible who, like me, really enjoy Jacksonville history and want to know what was going on back in the day. Uh, so thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later.